So how to add a Jinx-like character to Unity using dots? So we are using my previous scene as in my last video. Just here I added a UI. For the UI I've added two buttons, one in Rocket, one in Finnegan, just to swap between the guns. In this scene we have two prefabs, bullet and a rocket, and then I added multiple enemies. Then I have uh, my player and it has a minigun on the right and a rocket launcher on the left. Or vice versa. The prefabs, now how to make the prefabs. Basically the rocket and the bullet is going to be the same, just with different names. So for the rocket data we have speed damage and direction offering we don't even need to have anything we're gonna add it later but we need the offering just to to bake it and then the baker is adding an empty rocket data and the prefab component so the prefab component what does the prefab component do uh it basically makes this object invisible this entity invisible in runtime and also the system code it does not apply to the prefabs and the rocket system. Now the rocket system is a little bit more complicated. First we are going to be introducing you to the component lookups. Basically here we describe what component we are going to be looking up. Um, we initialize this with uh, read only is going to be debated true. Then we also initialize manager. We are going to be using a physics world here to detect if the bullet has actually hit or the rocket in this case has actually hit the target. And we update the enemy health component. Uh, also, we set a filter. Basically, this is going to be an enemy filter. The 6 actually describes the enemy. As you can see, it's the 6th layer here. So, we're going to be using the 6th layer. And it belongs to and collides with the 6th layer. This is going to be used for the bullet or the rocket. Um, now, we use the entities. This is here, we're going to be adding the entities. This is not a right way to be deleting the entities. But, uh, this video, watch it as more of a principle instead of a copy-paste code. Uh, more of a principle of how to implement this. So now we also going to be running this for all entities that have rocket data and local transform and physics collider. Uh, physics collider is actually never used, although I do have it on here, but it's not really ever used. So we don't necessarily need to add it here. We move the, the bullet or the rocket uh, towards the direction we set uh, in the data. So as you can see in the rocket data we have the direction. So we use this to and the speed actually to travel. So we use the direction and speed to travel towards this direction. If you collide with any player, then we check if there are any or multiple players around. Now also this is uh, just a quick code I added up, this is not that performant. You probably don't even need to use that, you just good by using this alone instead of this. Uh, then for each hit, as you can see even if the name is bad, but for each hit we just minus the health and then we set the health for the enemy and we add this entity, basically the bullet or the rocket to the entity's list which will rate a destroy. Here you could also use a parallel job, uh, which is not really valid for this action here. Or you can use just a regular job, just so you don't get any memory leaks by using this approach here with entities. So that's how the bullet works. Now how do we actually uh, shoot the bullet? So as you can see we have two scripts here, which is player rocket launcher system. So in the minigun system, or the rocket system, it's pretty much the same. We get the bullet prefab query, which is going to be a bullet data and the prefab component. Then we click the UI buttons, rocket or minigun. We actually, what we do is, when we click these two buttons, what we do is actually we get the player, we remove any of the components, if there are any, else we get the minigun data, which is from mQuery, mQuery is going to be the minigun data. So at this point, we removed the minigun data from the player, so the player doesn't have the minigun data, but the only thing that does, it's the minigun itself. And if we go to here, we can find it. So it has the speed of 10 and the damage of 1. So we have the only minigun there is, and we get its minigun data. Now we set it sort of a player stats, and if we look at the player data, we can see what it has bullet speed and damage. So we instantiate the prefab and then we set 
the bullet damage and the speed from the player data, set everything, set the transform of the bullet from the, to be at the same spot as the player, and then we basically look at to just uh, follow any enemy that exists. Going back to the UI, here we can see that we add this minigun component to the player as well. So now the player minigun system picks up that there is a player query with player data and the minigun data. So it means the player accidentally equipped a minigun. In our case, it would be player data and rocket launcher data. So in this case, the player has equipped the rocket launcher and the code is pretty much the same except there is the rocket prefab which we fire later on. So on the minigun system, we have a bullet prefab. So in play, we can select a minigun and if you right click, it fires a single bullet. So now if, if we check the enemy health, you see 97, 93, basically they have different health because I hit different ones. But if we pick up the rocket and if fire one, there's 87, 83. As you can see, everyone's health went down by a 10. Rocket system, we also overlap and check for anyone who is colliding, who's next to the colliding entity. And we also minus the health from them as well. So that's basically how you would implement a Jinx character like in Unity. Of course, this code is, as I said, is not perfect. You should only use it as an example of how to do it instead of actually copying and pasting it.